Now, once again, once we figure out how to determine the unit volume, everything else is just mathematics. You carry out the integral, and this result becomes 1 over 6 of m times h squared. Once again, this h must be the dimension perpendicular to the axis of consideration. What about iy? Now we go back to this expression, and you use this and plug it in. Now the funny thing is, when you calculate the iy, we actually didn't get the expression of 1 over 6 times m times b squared. We actually arrived 1 quarters of rho t times b cubed times h, which is 1 half of total mass times b squared. And this is an interesting result. If you compare this triangle with this triangle, if you look at this, by changing the orientation of this triangular plate, the mass moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis doesn't change. If the triangle plate is oriented this way, Ix is 1 6 of total mass times h squared. If you change it to this orientation, the value of Ix is still the same. But the value of Iy has increased from 1 6 times total mass times b squared to 1 half of total mass times b squared, which literally increased by 3 times. Now what does that mean? The reason is actually very simple. When you have the mass distribution very close to the axis of rotation, which in this case, we have the mass which is distributed very close to the x and y axis. In this case, ix and iy both tend to become something very small. But when you start moving the mass away from the y-axis, in this case, the distribution of mass with respect to the x-axis doesn't change. The height is still h, and the distribution may move from this triangle to become this triangle, but the base is still here. However, for the y-axis, if you look at this result, most of the mass has actually moved away from the y-axis, which will increase the mass moment of inertia with respect to the y-axis only. The center of this triangle, we can actually calculate it from here. The center of this triangle, as we know, is one-third of each leg. In this case, is one-third of h on y-axis and one-third of b from on the x-axis, which is somewhere here. And from here, you can know this is the center of gravity. What about the center of gravity of this triangle? It's one-third from here, one-third of b, and one-third of h, which is somewhere here. So the center of gravity of this triangle versus the center of tra gra gravity of this triangle doesn't change, which is back to the x-axis, but it changes significantly from one-third of b, which is right here, to two-thirds of b, because it's one-third from this leg, and that means it's two-thirds from the y-axis to here. And that is the reason why the constant distance from the center of gravity to the x-axis leads to the unchanged mass moment of inertia, which is back to the x-axis. But the moving away of the center of gravity, which is back to the y-axis, will result in the increase of mass moment of inertia, which is back to the y-axis, which is why this mass moment of inertia becomes three times of the mass of moment of inertia on the y-axis in this case. So in this example, we move the mass distribution away from the y-axis, which was on this side, to the right-hand side. We move the mass away from the y-axis by keeping the mass distribution the same, which is back to the x-axis. The next example, 
Let's change the orientation again. Let's move the mass distribution of this triangular play away from both the x and y axis, which is like this. Now you have noticed that this is the opposite case to the first triangular place, which is the one we consider here. In this example, the mass distribution is within this triangular area, as opposed to, in this case, it's the same linear equation, but the mass distribution of the triangular plane is above the slope, which is in this area. Now, just like the conversion we did for this one, just keep in mind that by definition, your x and y always starts from the region, which is from this, from this point to the right and to the up. When you change the definition, you will have to convert the x prime to x and the same thing convert y prime to y. So if you do the same conversion and we plug in the definition, ix is determined by one half of the total mass times h squared and yy becomes one half of mass times b squared. Compare this result to this result. Now, in this case, the distribution of mass with respect to the x-axis has changed significantly. So that's why the mass moment of inertia of this triangular plane was one sixth of mass m times h squared. Now it becomes one half of m times h squared, which is three times bigger. The same idea explains why the mass moment of inertia of y increases from this case to this case here because in this case we have the mass distribution close to y-axis and then you move away from the y-axis leading to the increase of the mass moment of inertia which is back to the y-axis if we do the same both the ix and iy will increase they both become one half m times corresponding perpendicular distance square so we learned from these examples is an important lesson, which means that by choosing the axis of rotation in finding the mass moment of inertia, from the first example, we choose the lower base and the vertical base as the axis of rotation. And this is actually similar to by choosing this horizontal axis versus this vertical axis as the axis of rotation for finding the corresponding mass moment of inertia. So what we learn from these examples is that mass moment of inertia will change depending on the direction of rotation that you consider and it also depends on the point that you consider.